What is good? What is up? It's Jordan or Texans Thoughts, and I'm back with another video today. I'm going to be breaking down Brevin Jordan, the tight end out of Miami. He was the best value pick in our draft, you know, stealing the hurricane in the fifth round and Brevin's potential whew, is truly tantalizing. He has the athleticism to make plays in the receiving game and the willingness to get his hands dirty as a blocker. The dude is young though, and he does need some polishing. Plus, you know, tight ends typically take a year or two to get their feet wet in the NFL, so I wouldn't expect him to start right away, but he is hands down the Texans heir to the tight end one Rome, a position I believe he can command for a decade. So let's break down the film of Brevin Jordan, because the film don't lie. Let's start with the exciting aspects of Brevin's game and his bread and butter is making plays in the receiving game, lined up in the slot. This is called a Y tight end and it's reserved for those you know top tier athletes who are essentially wide receivers playing in a tight end body. Brevin gets some comparisons to guys like Evan Ingram and our own Jordan Akins. The two guys who are you know a matchup weapon in the slot versus linebackers or safeties and this role is how Brevin should be utilized to play to his strengths on the Texans and here he even beats a nickel cornerback. The defense is in cover 3 here and the weak point in a cover 3 defense is up the seam. With Brevin positioned in the slot, he's running sort of a skinny post or seam buster depending on what you want to call it. And pre-snap, the quarterback should know that this is his best option. Brevin's trying to get behind these linebackers, which get sucked in by play action, and in front of the safety. I like how he sells this route. Since he wants to win to the inside, he uses a head fake and jab step to make the cornerback think he's going outside, but leaves the defender in the dust instead. Brevin's athleticism allows him to consistently be a threat up the seam, and he really made his money in this area of the field. Here's a nice simple concept the Texans can use to get Brevin in a position to play to his strength. Miami motions Brevin across the line of scrimmage and the defense is in a cover 4 match zone. Match means a zone defense with man principles, so whichever player comes into your zone, you'll follow and cover them even if they leave your zone. So Miami knows this and they know how Duke is going to play these two tight ends. The outside cornerback will take the outside aligned tight end, Brevin Jordan, and the safety will take the inside aligned tight end. Therefore, Miami calls a post corner concept here to get both tight ends running in the opposite direction of where their defender has the initial leverage advantage. For example, you wouldn't want Brevin running the corner in this post corner concept because he'll run right into the cornerback who has outside leverage. In addition, you wouldn't want this other inside line tight end to run a post against the inside aligned safety. But if you switch their route responsibility, you're giving them an instant advantage and see how the outside cornerback, someone who's likely a lot faster than Brevin, he can't come close to keeping up downfield because you took away their leverage advantage. Brevin is a big play threat at tight end, averaging 15.2 yards per reception and 7 touchdowns in just 8 games in 2020. Just like Nico Collins, he gives us another big body matchup weapon to help improve our red zone offense. He's too quick for this safety in main coverage, and I also like his route awareness versus zone coverage. Again, you'll see him attack up the seam behind the linebackers in front of the safeties. But the way he started his route wasn't heading there. Brevin actually has a slant here, and whether there is a built-in option to take it deeper, or he just improvises, I don't know. I don't have the playbook, not the coach, not Brevin Jordan, but it's a great route. And there are many instances of him reading zone defense as well, so I believe this is good awareness out of Brevin and not just dumb improvisational luck. So with the slant, he would be running right into these defenders in the box. And you can see that this linebacker is creeping forward. He's ready to pick it off. So Brevin knows this is no longer a good option. And because it is zone, he also knows that he can cut this upfield. And no defender will be following him like in man coverage. He finds the open space in the defense and gives his quarterback an option. Love it. Another valuable aspect that Brevin brings is his ability to gain yards after the catch. Miami gets Brevin the ball here on the bubble screen and he does the rest of the work, showing off his explosiveness with the hops. 
I think the Texans could benefit from a playmaker like this, and I think we should scheme him touches sort of like how the Titans did with Jonu Smith. Get him the ball in space, and let him take over. Jonu is actually my player comparison for Brevin. They are built nearly identically in terms of height, weight, and arm length, and their speed and agility testing is eerily similar too. Now Jonu did test more explosively, but when you watch the two play, their games have a lot of similarities. Both are plus athletes, impactful in the passing game, but mainly through Yak because, you know, they aren't the greatest route runners. They both need some help, you know, getting open through the offensive scheme. They're like Travis Kelsey type of route runners, just gonna snap your ankles on a consistent basis. But in addition, Jonu was a very raw blocker coming out of college, but he was always willing. That was the main thing. He had the mindset for it. Now you fast forward three years and he's no stud, but he's dependable for the Titans and he wasn't someone who's going to make a lot of big mistakes. So that's kind of the best case scenario for what I see Brevin's NFL projection becoming. And I think it's a good segue to the aspects of his game that he can improve on to play at that level of a Jonu Smith. No one is going to mistake Brevin for a physically imposing blocker like Rob Gronkowski or George Kittle. Brevin often misses his target due to some poor technique, but it's more than fixable in my opinion. You'll often see Brevin miss blocks in the run game like this because he puts his head down. And I get that Brevin is trying to play with low pad level to be more powerful, but he needs to keep his eyes on the target better and square up his shoulders to the defender he's trying to block. In addition, Brevin isn't the most dependable pass blocker either. Here, a blitz gets him confused. There's a defensive end and a linebacker coming his way, and you can see he checks the inside, and just as his head is turning, the linebacker actually starts the blitz. So he misses it, but the running back is probably screaming at him that there's another guy coming. But what they should have done here is just have the running back take the linebacker, and Brevin takes a defensive end. Instead, Brevin whiffs on the D end and goes to block the linebacker because, principally, the rusher who is coming from the most inside angle, they are the highest priority. But that results in Brevin blocking no one and the Eric King getting sacked. Like I mentioned earlier though, Brevin isn't helpless as a blocker because he has the willingness and competitive toughness to bring the nasty and block. Here's the best example I could find and he just completely drives his defender out of the play. Good technique here, getting low, squaring up the target, strong grip on their shoulder pads, and then run those legs to drive forward and generate power. That's great technique, man. And this is a linebacker who has come down onto the line of scrimmage. So having a tight end who can block one-on-one -on -one like this completely changes your run game for the better. Here's another good block on the screen. It's not perfect, but it's effective. Again, he's low, he squares up, he gets into the chest, and he doesn't let go. I really like the wide base here too. That gives him better balance, and he can move the cornerback out of the way. You see the flashes from Brevin. He's not allergic to contact or getting his hands dirty. Hell, I would go as far to say that he likes to hit dudes. He just needs some more coaching to make his fundamentals and technique consistent. Another thing Brevin needs to work on is cutting out the focus drops from his game. He doesn't have bad hands, he just drops some passes that you'd absolutely expect him to catch. It was a pattern for him and anyone who watched Miami games can probably agree. I mean, this one does squeak through two sets of hands, but it also doesn't get altered and it also goes right through Brevin's mitts. You just gotta catch them. Again, I'm not saying he has butterfingers or anything, it's just about the mental aspect and concentrating better. Brevin made better catches when he was contested than when he was wide open. And when you see that, you know, it's not about his hands, it's just more about focus. You're going to focus better in these catch and traffic scenarios because it's a tougher catch. Just bring that same level of focus to every play, no matter the circumstance, and you'll be fine. Last thing to bring up with Brevin is his route running. Like Jordan Akins and Johnny Smith, Brevin is pretty raw in this regard. He's good at finding the holes in zone coverage, I love that, but versus man coverage, he struggles to separate. His meh agility and explosiveness likely limits his ceiling um, a bit in this regard, but if he can add more nuance to his routes, especially at the stem, that'll be huge. Sitting down on his brakes so that he can explode and create more separation will be huge. I'm very excited to see Brevin's developments over his tenure as a Houston Texan. He's got a lot of fun tools to become a dual threat tight end in the NFL. And at just 20 years old, he has a long career ahead of him with plenty of time to improve.
Learn some tricks in the passing game from Jordan Akins, become a more consistent blocker from Pharaoh Brown, and having our new tight end coach, Richard Angulo, who was previously the Ravens assistant tight end coach, you know, that should be big for Brevin's development. Put all the pieces together, right? And Brevin, you know, he might not start or get as much playing time as we hope right away this year, but learning from a coach who has coached up mid-round tight end picks like Mark Andrews, like Nick Boyle, I think that gives Brevin a, a pretty great chance to become an above average starter at tight end. All right, that's going to do it for the video. If you enjoy it, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on Brevin Jordan in the video. Take care, everyone. Come back for more. And remember, the film don't lie.